My name is Julie Maritou, and I'm a painter. There are certain paintings that stand out in a gallery that call you to them. Even with all the other Velasquez works in that room, this was one of the paintings that has always haunted me. It's a big marker for me in here than that. It's a portrait. So I went back and looked up some of the narratives around this painting, one being that Velasquez spent a few years in Rome preparing to make the portrait of Innocent X, and Juan de Pereo de Velasquez at the time was with him. He was one of his primary assistants, and he was his slave. I read this room, and I was thinking, how do you paint your slave? You know, American slave narrative is very different, but this is a person who did not have his rights to himself. There's such irony in that setup. The fact that Velasquez could capture the complex emotion that comes from his own position as the owner of this person and what that denies that person. He's standing there very proud, dignified. The slipping of his hand under his shawl pulls you to that part of him, just under his heart. The hair falls back into the background and gives the illumination of the face and this radiance. When you come up close to it and you look at the way the brush strokes articulate the lace on the shawl is just incredible. I get goosebumps. It's the gentleness of the brush on his face, articulating his mouth, his lips, his nostrils. He's almost holding a breath. You feel like you're encountering a real human being. To be able to capture the complete humanity of someone you think of as not completely human in the same level as you, there's an incredible contradiction there that blows my mind, actually. Think of the political implications of painting a black man with copper skin and brown eyes and then the piercing look. It's not contempt. I don't read it as rageful or angry. And it's not resignation, but this very conflicted, implicit sadness in that human being described within that dignity. There's honor in being painted by someone such as Velasquez. But on the other hand, Juan de Breja was also a painter in his own right, from what I read. And in one narrative, Velasquez freed him to follow his work. In another narrative, Velasquez didn't actually want him to paint, and he painted secretly without Velasquez's knowledge of it. So there are these competing narratives, and those are also fascinating to me. Who knows what the narrative actually is and what the intention was with the portrait, but the fact that it wasn't for years after this painting was made that he was freed. Looking at his expression, I'm moved almost to tears. That's not often that a painting can do that. It's hard to give language to that experience that happens when you're in front of a work like this. And it feels so alive. Then you walk back from it and his eyes don't leave you. I leave and I still see his face.